What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. And we are coming off a win. Yeah, you heard me correctly. It's been a while since I've been able to open up an SFL video and say that. But we eked out a 22-20 to victory over our division rivals, Oklahoma City Eels. Now, today may be a little different. I don't know. But we're taking on a very, very good Jersey Shore D's squad. They are 5-1. and one, And they got two subscriber players Looking to make life tough for us today. That would be tight end Jesse Moore and cornerback subscriber Aiden Brow. In addition to taking on two subscribers, we also have two new subscribers joining the SFL today. We are up to 39 subscribers in the league. If you guys would like to join, check the pinned comment down below. If this is your first time watching an SFL video, go back and watch the first one so you know what's going on. It's a great time, and this is a subscriber-packed interactive league. Also going to showcase all of your guys' stats so far into the season. We are here in Week 7, and want you guys to get a look at how your creative player has done so far this season. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. And joining quite possibly the most popular team in the SFL, our division rival Savannah Spirits. They got like, what, seven, eight subscribers on it? We're going to see in a minute when I go through the stats. But we got a new defender joining Savannah, and that would be Mr. Cam O'Shea. Shout out at Rambo. Cute in the comments. Cam here is 6'4", 250 out of SFL. Uh, 82 overall. He's a field general archetype. And he looks to be pretty solid across the board, uh, wearing that green dot in the center of the defense. He's got 91 speed to go along with 92 tackle. So basically, if Cam gets his mitts around you, you're not going anywhere. You're pretty much going to be stopped in your tracks because he is a sure-handed tackler. Also, 82 play rec, so pretty smart, pretty strong at uh, 81. And Cam here looking to keep the spirits undefeated as they are 6-0 and on the season. And joining Superstar X Factor subscriber running back Bobby Donuts, we have a new quarterback in town here on the Albany Argonauts, and that would be Mr. Craig Ray. Shout out at Craig Ray, 1827 in the comments. I know you requested to join the St. Louis Sentinels. We got a subscriber QB on that team already. That would be Mr. Ashton Saber. I felt like Albany Argonauts were a good fit for you. If you would like to go to a different team, let me know. But you got a really, really uh, strong halfback playing alongside you in the backfield. So I think Albany might be the place to be here. But Craig here, 6'6", 236, gave him the Justin Herbert type of build. Also got the number 10 on his chest. He is out of Arizona. He's got 95 throw power, so just like Jay Herbo, pretty much a cannon for an arm. Pretty accurate across the field, too. 85 deep, 85 medium, and 88 short. So basically, he can get the ball where it needs to go, and he can also heave that puppy downfield. Albany is making some noise over in the NFC East, and now with Craig Ray and Bobby Donuts, two subscribers on board, the Argonauts are going to be looking to take that next step. We'll just go through alphabetically here, the teams, and I will showcase all the subscriber stats here. I encourage you not to skip ahead because you're going to want to see how your player is doing and how you stack up with the rest of the subscribers in the league. So kicking things off with the Albany Argonauts here, Craig Ray, who I just showed you, he took over, uh, I think Bryce Young was the quarterback, so I just changed him over. We know Craig Ray is going to be leaps and bounds better than Bryce Young. <laughs> But so far on the season, 1,368 total yards, completing 70% of his passes, so not bad. Touchdown interception ratio 10 to 7, so not the best thing in the world. But I'm sure that uh, now that it's Craig Ray and not Bryce Young, I'm sure we're going to see those stats elevate, no problem. And getting a look at the rushing attack here, Bobby Donuts, again, the superstar X-Factor player. If you would like your player to have superstar or superstar X-Factor dev, Go check out the channel memberships. It's two bucks a month for the low tier, three bucks a month for the high tier. And one of the perks amongst many others is you get a dev tray upgrade to your player. But Bobby Donuts here, 116 carries on the season, 465 yards, five touchdowns, 17 broken tackles. Pretty good. 
and he's averaging four yards per carry. He's went off, though, touchdowns in back-to-back -back games, I want to say. And then uh, Craig Ray here also doing it on the ground as well. Two touchdowns. That's nice to see. And also 94 yards. And if we get a look at uh, Mr. Donuts here in the receiving game, not really utilizing him too much, but still five receptions for 30 yards, no touchdowns. But we know Bobby is a downhill power back and probably doing that a lot more than catching passes in the receiving game. But there are the subscriber stats for your Albany Argonauts. Portland Destroyers up next, we got a lone receiver here, and that would be Mr. Alexander Klobleck. 14 receptions, 114 yards, only one touchdown. I mean, the Portland uh, Destroyers, they got they got some guys, man. So lots of targets, lots of footballs, and, you know, not a lot of players. To, to More footballs being thrown than players are to catch them. But nice to see Alexander still at least getting a touchdown. Any rushing yards for my man? He actually does have two attempts for four yards. So kind of a quiet season, but, you know, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Klobleck here is going to start to make some more noise here in the weeks to come. Jersey Shore D's just talked about him. We play him today. They got Lamar Jackson as the QB. And if we get a look at our subscriber tight end, Mr. Jesse Moore, second on the team in receiving yards. And it looks like first on the team in receiving touchdowns. He has went off since joining the SFL just a few short weeks ago. He has 20 and leading the team in receptions too. How about that? 27 receptions, 311 yards, and five touchdowns that is some good good stats there and he he might be a problem he might be a problem here today no rushing stats for jesse but you know he's a he's a tight end so what can you really expect some tight ends do uh you know run out of like a you know reverse handoffs and whatnot end arounds things of that nature but defender here aiden grouse second on the team in tackles i do like to see that at 25 he's also got three tfls for a cornerback that's pretty good I mean, that is really good. They must be using him in a lot of blitz packages. No picks so far in the season. I'm sure that uh, one of those bad boys is coming here pretty soon. But three pass deflections, not too bad. And we'll see if uh, Aiden's going to lock down our Terminators today. Okay, see Eels, who we just played and beat by two points. Mason Buchanan was a dog in that game, but we just did just enough on defense to surpass him he has 1291 yards on the season completing 69 percent of his passes that is awesome but look at that touchdown interception ratio vintage aaron Rodgers esque with the 13 tds and only the two interceptions we didn't pick him off last week at all so mason is uh definitely doing his thing and then we got subscriber running back Grom briner here 74 attempts 267 yards not the best average, you know, 3.6 yards per carry, three touchdowns. But in that game against us, he was more of a threat in the receiving game. So I'm sure he's got some good receiving stats. Also, Mason Buchanan doing a little bit on the ground. I mean, 28 attempts, that's actually kind of a lot. 136 yards and also two touchdowns. He's got the baby wheels. Remember, we saw that on full display. But yeah, Gromp Reiner, I mean, this dude is a receiving back, like 14 receptions 149 yards he averages over 24 yards per game and four touchdowns which is good for second most on the team and he's a freaking running back guys and brother of our quarterback on tuscaloosa drew thompson we got alex thompson here on the north carolina flyers 1252 yards completing 73 percent of his passes wow 12 touchdowns, three interceptions. That's also a very good touchdown to interception ratio. And guys, if you're digging these teams, man, you know, these teams were all created by me. Just in case this is anybody's first time watching, they're all available on the download center. And if you would like to see every single team that I made, go back and watch the first video in this playlist. I put hella time into the customization, the stadium, the jerseys, all that good stuff. And you can join any team that you would like to. But shout out Alex Thompson here. I know they've dropped a couple games recently. They're in our division as well. But he's doing his part. And I got a feeling that the Flyers are going to be flying here before too long. Going on over to the San Jose Industrials. Drake May, who's about to start. I'm recording this on Friday. He's about to start for the first time on Sunday. So by the time this video goes up, you might have already seen how good or how poor he did. But his second best receiver looks to be the second highest targeted receiver. Anyways, is Mr. Yeezy Fuentes, 
27 receptions, 379 yards, and three touchdowns, all good for second place amongst receivers. And I know that he's been going off in these last couple of games. So shout out to Yeezy and the San Jose Industrials. Next up, the Grand Rapids Lightning in the NFC North. We got Mr. Lucas Spicer, who just joined last episode. I can't remember who, whose uh, place he took, but he's got 1,338 yards so far on the season. 73% completion percentage, which is awesome to see. Eight touchdowns, seven picks. That's kind of the Achilles heel, but really it's only two games worth of Lucas and whoever the other quarterback was before him is probably responsible for most of those picks, I would say. And he's also got a subscriber wide receiver to throw the ball to. Again, lots of targets here. Cooper, Sam Laporta, Mike Williams, Travis Etienne, also even a receiving back. So Floyd Butler is doing what he can. 12 receptions, 94 yards, and a lone touchdown on the season. Next up, the Rochester Rebels, who also just beat us a few episodes ago. Most teams that we've played have beat us, guys. We've only won two games so far on this young season. Still a lot of time to go, but Chase Kaiser did hand us an L a few episodes ago, and he is at 1,175 yards, 71% completion for Chase, and he's got a 2-1 to one touchdown interception ratio at 10-5, to five. so not too bad. And then he is also throwing the ball to Tommy Pickle, one of the best names, 99 rated overall name, hands down, no doubt about it. And he is the uh, third highest receiver, it appears, in receptions and also yards. He is at 17 for 215, averaging 43 a game, and also has found Pater twice as well. And any rushing stats for Tommy doesn't look like it. No, I'm not seeing any Chase Kaiser, though. He's doing his thing on the ground. He's at 27 attempts. Again, kind of a lot if you think about it for a quarterback. 84 yards and also two touchdowns with his legs. Older Rockies up next, and we got a subscriber quarterback and a subscriber wide receiver who I've been checking the rushing stats every episode for you. I'm so sorry about that again. But Lucas Thomas here, 1,190 yards, 67% of completion rate. So little bit lower than some of the other QBs that we've looked at so far, but a good touchdown interception ratio over three to one, just barely, but still 13 touchdowns to four interceptions. And he is also doing his thing on the ground as well when needed. I mean, 29 attempts again, like that's a third of what Najee Harris has. So he's doing some stuff on the ground, 104 yards and also two touchdowns. And then this is where I was making my mistakes, not showcasing Mr. Austin Lucas. Again, I am so sorry about that. You were a running back in the first SFL, you know, Madden 24. So I think that's where the wires kind of got crossed a little bit. But 25 receptions, 286 yards, good for second place on the team amongst receivers, averaging 47.7 yards per game and also a lone touchdown on the season. St. Louis Sentinels up next, and uh, one of our newer subscribers as well, Ashton Saber. He took over Desmond Ritter, I know that much, because for whatever reason, Desmond Ritter was randomly like freaking uh, Brett Favre incarnated, like he was just killing it. But 1,416 yards here for Ashton on a 68% completion percentage, and a pretty good touchdown interception ratio, maybe a little bit too many picks, but... Still over that 2-1 threshold at 16 and 7. And the Sentinels were the first game we played, one of our only two wins that we've gotten in week one. And shout out Ashton Saber and the Sentinels. Topeka Silverbacks, Silverbacks Nation up next. We got Kyrie Brooks, who is, I know we just did the top 10 in all the categories last week. And I want to say he was like fourth, maybe third. He was up there. 1,444 yards, seven touchdowns, five picks. So obviously you want to see that touchdown number rise and that interception number just pretty much stay where it's at. But can't be too mad. The Silverbacks are doing good this season. And Kyrie with the 70% completion percentage is a very big part of their success. Savannah Spirits, got to make sure I don't leave any subscribers out because they got a ton of them. But Caleb Hayes here. I mean, early discussion for MVP. The MVP yearly awards should be out, you know, the standings pretty soon. And I'm very curious to see if Caleb is up there in the top of that discussion. But 1721, 1,721 yards, almost at 2,000 here. And we are only in week six. 
and a 16 touchdown, five interception, completing nearly 80% of his passes. That is just dirty. I mean, he is turning opposing DBs into spirits, literally. Like, he's they're non-existent on the field when Caleb is throwing the ball. But Daniel Banks here, the running back, he's also doing really good as well. 101 attempts, 431 yards on the ground, averaging 4.3 yards per carry, also seven touchdowns to go along with that. And Caleb doing some stuff on the ground himself, 25 attempts, 85 yards, and two touchdowns. Also, George Smith, the receiver, one attempt for five yards. And getting a look at the receiving yards, it's actually Elijah Moore that uh, leads their team, but Dallas Bolton, the tight end, I know he's been going off in the recent weeks. 35 receptions, 405 yards, three touchdowns, averaging 67.5 per game. And then we got DeAndre Smith here, 30 receptions for 360 yards, averaging 60 yards per game, and also found the end zone twice. George Smith, the brother of DeAndre here, he has 26 catches, 294 yards, averaging 49 per game and two touchdowns. And then also the running back, Daniel Banks, getting involved in the receiving game himself. He's got 14 for 152 and also two receiving touchdowns. So like there is just weapons, weapons everywhere when it comes to the spirits. And on defense, they got some guys too. I mean, Cam O'Shea, we just added him. And he's the leading tackler on this team at 38. Two TFLs and also an interception to go along with three pass deflections. So I don't remember who his former player was, but he's taken, taken on a, a big role here on this defense. And then, of course, Jackson Prime here. 24 tackles, no picks in that cornerback role. Obviously, you'd like to see some of those, but one pass deflection. And then lastly, we have Trustin Smith Jr., he is at 23 tackles. He does have a pick himself and also one pass deflection. Don't think I forgot anybody. Uh, nope, did not. So shout out to the undefeated Savannah Spirits. Salem Steelhawks up next here. They got three subscribers and the QB Cameron Moore looks to be a very, very solid one. 1,491 yards, 71% completion rate. And again, just a nasty. Oh, Ooh. look, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I forgot he was on this team. Nasty, nasty 12 touchdowns to two interceptions. He is looking like this guy a few years ago. Not this year, unfortunately, for uh, for my guy, Aaron. <laughs> Having a little bit of a tough go at it, but good stats there from Cameron Moore. And then we got two subscriber defenders here. We got Daniel THG. He has 21 tackles, a TFL and a pick and also a pass deflection to go along with that. And then Not Oreo, the winner of my 1,000 subscriber NFL jersey giveaway. So shout out to Not Oreo. He's got 19 tackles, four TFLs, three sacks. So causing some havoc in the backfield. And shout out to all the subscribers on the Salem Steelhawks. Akron Summits up next, which I have another ongoing series, my main franchise series. And the Akron Summits are the team that I use for that one so if you like the full franchise content you know going through the opening the intro all that good stuff go check out that series but mr dragon zetron here another 99 rated overall name he is at 1163 yards on a 65 percent completion rate and a nine touchdown three interception performance so far on the season toronto thunderbirds my um, uh sfl team that i used in madden 24 obviously i redid the logo made it a lot better but we got jordan baker here as the qb 1130 yards on a 62 percent completion so a little lower than what we've seen and five touchdowns four picks obviously would want to see those touchdowns go up a little bit still a young season and i'm confident that jordan can do it and uh, the Thunderbirds, I'm always going to be rooting for them a little bit on the sidelines because that was my former team. So shout out Jordan Baker and the T-Birds. And of course, had to save the best for last. Don't worry about this not uh -huh. Bo Nix character. He, he's nobody to worry about. We're looking at Drew Thompson. Now, in fairness, you could combine these stats here because, uh, you know, not Bo Nix was <laughs> Bo Nix before. And then I created Drew Thompson, but I threw so many dumb picks with Bo Nix, pick up sticks, pick six. I don't know, I'm dropping bars here today. Nice ride. I just felt it was right to give Drew a clean slate. So uh, two games in, 
He's at 5'11 and one touchdowns. But the big thing, zero interceptions. I am very, very proud of that number. Um, and also no rushing stats for him quite yet. Uh, mostly the, the subscribers are on the defensive side of the ball here in Tuscaloosa. So go ahead and check out some of these players. Our defense kind of been quiet, but they did come together as a complete defensive unit last episode. So I'm excited to see where that leads. But we got Jaden Taylor here, our, one of our cornerbacks. He has 21 tackles and one, one TFL, no picks yet, but it's coming. And also two pass deflections as well. Jax Vaden really has been like the big guy wreaking havoc in the backfield, our linebacker. He's at 15 tackles, but look at the five TFLs and the 3.5 sacks. You love to freaking see it. Then we got Austin Kringle, our defensive end. He's at 12 tackles, one TFL, no sacks yet. But again, it's coming. I know it is. Aiden Leslie, he's at eight tackles, one TFL, and a half. I was going to say, I knew, I knew some of these guys had like at least part of a sack number. But uh, half a sack there for Aiden Leslie. And also Brandon Moore, who we just added. He's, you know, pretty new. Seven tackles, two TFLs, and a pass deflection. But he had that key uh, extra point, two-point conversion on the blocked kick last week that helped us beat the OKC Eels. So game ball goes out to Brandon Moore. And then, of course, our defensive captain here, Silas Vaden. He's at uh, five tackles, but looks like all five of them are TFLs. No sacks yet, but you can't really argue with that. If every time he's getting a tackle, it's a TFL, I will certainly take it. But there are the subscriber stats for your Tuscaloosa Terminators. And hold the phone here. I almost forgot the man who kicked the field goal to win the walk-off field goal last week. So game ball actually split. I don't know if you can split a football, whatever. Maybe there was two game balls, but... Uh, Brandon Moore gets one, but Corey Booter with the game ceiling field goal. He's at four for six, and, you know, the two misses, that's on me because I'm not a good kicker, but nine for nine on extra points, so that is awesome to see, and uh, he does have one, you know, up to 39 yards, so I got to work on my kicks, but shout out Corey Booter with the walk-off game winner last week against OKC. Bit of a long intro, I know, but I had to go through the subscriber stats. It's only right that you guys see those, and we are here on Monday night primetime against the Jersey Shore Ds. If anybody gets that reference, drop it in the comments because I think that is beautiful, beautiful genius. But here are the Ds away teams, and then... The home jerseys as well, again, all made by me, and the GTLs. I bet you nobody, well, I shouldn't say that, but if you know what GTL is in reference to the Jersey Shore Ds, you are the MVP. We are going to go ahead and uh, just rock with the standard aways here. We are back home at Skynet Superfield on Monday night primetime. If you guys are fired up for some more SFL content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, help me get now to 2,000 subscribers and without further ado, let's get on down to Tuscaloosa and get ready for the game. Opening kick is up and underway, so we are going to see this Tuscaloosa defense who really had the game of their game of the season last week uh, against the OKC, OKC Eels. We did a lot of good things, and we held them to, what, 20 points, which normally teams pretty much double up on that, but we're going to be facing two-time MVP Lamar Jackson, only throwing three interceptions on the season. The big question is, can our, did we, do we even have a pick this season? I think we might have one, like maybe one or two. I don't know. Um, but we're going to need to start getting some of those, especially on quarterbacks that are good like this because they can propel their team to a victory. So it all starts now, and that's a quick little check down there to subscriber Jesse Moore he stopped up there by Amari Taylor and you get a look at Jesse's stats last week six for 84 and a big touchdown second and six we're gonna press up here and just hopefully have to play some good man coverage nope that is gonna be Malik neighbors Brandon Moore couldn't get him Amari Taylor does come in to help out with the cleanup work it's a nice pass there Malik neighbors is uh, balling out in real life you know I would say as far as rookies go, him, Jaden Taylor, or Jaden Taylor, <laughs> Jaden Daniels, with all the Jadens here, I'm getting getting messed up. Uh, yeah, but they're probably the two best. We'll see what Jackson does here. 
on second down. It's a screen pass. Ooh, nice tackle there. Amari Taylor already with three opening, uh, early opening tackles too, by the way. Come on, guys. Need to play some good defense. Some pressure would be lovely. And there's Jesse Moore, subscriber, with his second tack or second catch of the game, I believe. I think Silas Vaden, our defensive tackle, was the one to uh, to get in there and get him. Let's go pressure. We gotta we gotta make something happen here. We can't just can't just sit back in zone and let Lamar Jackson pick us apart. James Cook trying to make something happen. He stopped there for only a gain of one. When will our defense step up and get some picks? That is the question. In my other series, we do it all the time. I need Xavier and Howard though to play some man coverage here on Cooper Cup. I don't like. Well, now he's sending Cup in motion. Going to be actually a drop back. Cup's going to get it, but actually for a loss of two. So maybe should have dropped that one. And now we got the D's in a big third down. Double mug here. Look, I don't like I don't like Malik Neighbors out there. He's uh, flat coverage. Come on. Come on, Aiden. Get to Jackson. Ah, somebody get there. It wasn't Aiden. It was Shelby Harris. But you know what? I will take it. I was I was mashing, mashing my uh, my analog stick down. Trying to get that sack for Aiden Leslie, but you know what? A sack is a sack, and a punt is a punt. And we're going to see Jake Bailey punt the ball to us, which is huge because, you know, we're going to get the ball coming out of halftime. So let's just, let's build up a lead, try to sustain it. This is going to be a tough matchup against a good football team. But Drew Thompson so far been playing clean. Not the most glorious of stats with only one touchdown, but we're kind of like – trying to establish our identity like are we a run first team with cmc you would kind of think that we would be because he's one of the best in the business but hasn't always always played out like that you know so i don't know what our identity is trying to win a freaking football game that's our identity that's a good opening carry there by mccaffrey for six and a good start uh, on this opening drive by the Terminators. Second and four. We got uh, some crossers all over the field. Ah, oh, was out of reach for Romeo Dobbs. That was not a good pass by Drew Thompson. And that was one that we really needed because Romeo Dobbs had green grass and blue skies. And he had room to roam. And now we find ourselves in a big third down. So can we pick it up? That's the question. Tyler Boyd says yes. And I say, okay, he is going to be tackled there by Chidabe Awuzie, but a nice, nice first down catch completion. And so far, this uh, opening drive, not looking too bad. I would like McCaffrey to just go off in this game. Like, that would be lovely if that could happen. Will it happen? I don't know. I mean, he's got tons of touchdowns, but still searching for, I think maybe he has like one game of over 100 yards which i mean maybe all purpose yards higher but that's christian mccaffrey he should be he should be doing that with ease so uh, we'll see if we can maybe get dobbs on the rpo we do and that was not the best block by d hop somehow dobbs fought through it it wasn't pretty but we do get the ball down into d's territory every time i say d's anything you guys know what i want to say next <laughs> Got <laughs> So hard not to. Uh, at Friar move? Can you? I mean, what's going on? These weird catches. Again, they're not pretty, but effective so far. I'm going to send D Hop on press. Uh, Take a quick peek at what Antoine. Ooh, actually. Winfield. Uh, we had pressure, though, coming off the edge, man. Uh, D Hop had a step. Antoine Winfield did come down to play the run. We could have had something there. Except for we didn't. Like, we could have had something. Only problem is, we didn't. So, third and ten, maybe in Corey Booter field goal range. Not sure. Um, Let's just maybe go to Dobbs. And it was just too congested. I saw the pressure coming in hot and heavy. And, you know, I will say this too. Our offensive line should be good. And they're really not. I got to be quiet here. 50-yarder, not automatic. See if I can drill this. That might be good from Booter. And it sneaks through just barely. So Corey Booter with his first 50-plus yard field goal, I think, of the season. It's not the sixth that we wanted, but we jump out to an early lead 
against a good ball club. And, you know, sometimes that's all that matters. Whether this is a high scoring shootout or whether it's a 13 to 10 victory, as long as we come away with the W, that's all that I care about. QB rush yards, actually Mason Buchanan. I know you can't see it because my camera's covering it up, but he's fifth in the league in terms of QB rushing numbers. So shout out Mason Buchanan on the Eels that we just played. I don't know what's up with this camera angle, man. Ever since they did the latest update, it's just, it's weird. And I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. James Cook, I tried to shoot a gap there with Roquan Smith and I got burned. Marcus May hawks him down, but that's a big, big pickup by brother of Dalvin Cook, James Cook. Funny story too, James Cook's name is James Dalvin Cook and Dalvin Cook's name is Dalvin James Cook. So how about that little... Uh, the, the parents were having some fun with that one. I don't know if you guys knew that. If you did, okay. And if you didn't, now you know. It's going to take us very close to the end of the first in what's been a low-scoring game to start. 3 nothing. but the Ds are on the move here. So uh, defense hoping that they can step up and make another play like they did last time. Got to watch out for Lamar Jackson because he can take off and run. He had way too much time and a wide open right side of the field. So thank God he did not take off and scramble. All right, let's see what the defense is made of here. Third and six, can we possibly force a second straight punt? We haven't done that too much on this channel and it would be awesome if we could. Not gonna do it. Jaden Taylor gonna get Jesse Moore. So a little subscriber on subscriber action and they're kind of jarring things up there and that is going to take us to the end of the first three nothing can't be mad at it uh wish it was 10 nothing you know obviously or i mean hey i wish it was 21 nothing i wish it was 35 nothing you can wish in one hand and you can do your business in the other and see which one fills up faster well, i'm out man right now yeah the d's are kind of moving uh they're starting to figure things out they got it into our territory so we gotta gotta tighten up here I'm probably going to use her up on Roquan Smith. I'm watching James Cook, and it's more again. He's been favorite target at Jackson. That time catches it, but for no game. We're sending heat at Jackson this time. Let me see James Cook stay back there as a blocker. That would be awesome. He might even just be the ball carrier on this one. He's going to send Taysom Hill, actually, who's backup tight end in motion on this team. And James oh, Cook sad. does stay into block, but it's a wide open Cooper Cup. And stopped up there by Jaden Taylor, but Lamar Jackson now at 54 yards. And I mean, unless something uh, crazy happens here, this could be the D's putting up six. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe if we could actually get some pressure in the backfield for once in this series, that might change things. Silas Vaden almost got to Jackson, and Jackson is going to score. Diving over Alex Singleton, taking a shot in the process, too. But the D's do find pay dirt, and they are presumably going to go up 7-3. So going to have to go back to work on offense with Drew Thompson. Hopefully reclaim our lead. Ooh, Jaden Taylor with a nice little crease. Okay. I mean, only ends up getting it to the 33. I thought we had something there. And uh, running back receiving yards, Christian McCaffrey is number one. But there is Daniel Banks of the Savannah Spirits down there at number five. So we're seeing some subscribers you know up there in uh the top categories i did go through the top 10 for all the subscribers uh previous episodes so if you want to want to check that out and see how guys are doing go check it out that's dangerous territory i did not even see chitabe awuzie there that one could have spelled disaster gotta pick up the pace here tuscaloosa uh mesh spot hopefully boyd or najoku it is gonna be an interception wow wow 100% on me. No one to blame but me on that one. And Drew Thompson does throw his first pick of the season. I mean, Makai Blackman, I don't know why I threw that, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, yeah, I thought I, I just didn't see him, man. I just didn't see him. He makes us pay. And now the D's are going to go up 14 to 3. That's all right. Wipe the INT from your memory and let's just bounce back here and hopefully do something Antoine Winfield's right there that's going to be a problem no way am I going to throw that in his vicinity we just had a pick from freaking Makai Blackman what do you think that uh what do you think that Antoine Winfield will do to us he will tear us to shreds so gotta always be mindful of where he's at on the field at all times 
This one seems like a Christian McCaffrey screen is in order. I mean, can I get any sort of blocking? McCaffrey trying to do it all himself, but I mean, there was just nothing set up. And that's the one job of the offensive lineman is to set up blocks. Cannot punt the ball back. I am going to audible this into an inside zone. May not be the best idea, but I'm going to roll with it. And Christian, forward progress, does stay the first down. That one was way too close, but luckily the drive does continue. Can we maybe kick this thing outside on second down? That's the question. Lots of bodies in here, and yeah. It was just too congested, unfortunately. Third and two. I might have to go into my own play call here because I really feel good about, yeah, RPO. Maybe uh, this should be Dobbs. It is Dobbs. He's, I'm half tempted to send him. Not going to do it, though. Uh, really hope that the defender doesn't take him, which he will not. Dobbs going to catch him and make him pay. And you know what? We're just going to let this thing tick all the way down to the two-minute warning. Back to McCaffrey here again in no real hurry. And actually, McCaffrey finds lanes where lanes weren't even there. <laughs> I thought he was going to be hit in the backfield, and he was actually able to plow ahead and pick up the first down. So how about that? That's a good way to good way to uh, boost the old confidence. Um, you know, I'm going to streak Hopkins. Winfield, if he if he comes down, great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you what. We're going to send Dobbs. Let's send Dobbs, streak him. That seems like a good idea. And let me see Antoine win. Oh, he did come down, actually. He did come down, actually. Come on, d Oh, he caught it and hauled it in. Look at that. Up over the top of subscriber cornerback Aiden Grout. I love you, brother, but you just got posterized on that one. That was, an, it was a good throw by uh, Thompson. Aiden Grout kind of jumped a little bit early. Kind of a weird animation there at the end, too. But we have thrown up that 50-50 ball to D-Hop many a time this season. It's proven to be actually quite effective. And uh, D-Hop going to make him pay on that one. Corey Booter going to boot the extra point through question mark yes he does question though did we leave too much time on the clock for the d's we're about to find out maybe we get pressure here off the left side i don't know Taysom hill gonna actually run towards that side so some extra blocking going on and oh jackson gonna be sacked who is it it is subscriber safety brandon moore you know what we're gonna call a timeout third and 14 brandon moore had that uh, two point conversion on the blocked extra point which really ultimately won us the game and he just had a big one there too as well and as long as nothing crazy happens we should you know what not even gonna talk not even gonna say anything shutting my mouth right now you certain up on Roquan Smith James Cook gonna be stopped there by Edwards we'll burn a timeout and I mean we're gonna have 55 seconds and one timeout to either draw it to within one or potentially take the lead and remember the key thing too is we get the ball after halftime so these next 55 seconds could very well define the outcome of this game see if uh Jaden taylor maybe can get a good block i mean look at more out there setting blocks too he's doing everything and this drive is going to start from the 32 i mean hey d hop getting pressed again so i'm definitely going to watch antoine winfield uh nope that time he didn't really do what I wanted him to do, but Najoku getting us at least very close to field goal range. I mean, we got 40 seconds and would love to love to just will our way into the end zone here. We only got one timeout, so got to be a little cognizant of that. I understand. D-Hop, though, open on the right side. He's got room to run. Just caught that big touchdown. And now, regardless, we are in field goal range, but we do want more. Of course, I will take the field goal if, if that's what happens, but I don't want that, and uh, we'll have to see how it goes here. See who can get open. We got... Oh, don't throw a pick! I just saw my life flash before my eyes. Luckily, what didn't happen, that'll make it second and ten. We could have uh, McCaffrey out of the Texas route, which I think that's where I'm going to go with the ball and we'll call our last time out this is dangerous territory but the one thing to remember is in madden 25 here there's no clock runoff so like if something happens and we don't get it 
you know, if we get stopped, I should say, we still would be able to uh, to bring out our field goal unit and still have time for a kick. It would be close, yes. It would be dicey, but it could happen. Now, I'm watching Winfield there for sure. Uh, oh, Najoku going to catch it and slide. Drew Thompson out here throwing darts. After that interception, he bounced back with a vengeance. And look at my man finding the Chief in the end zone. Beautiful, beautiful hookup. And we are going to go into the locker room with a two or three point lead. Depending on how bad I truly am at kicks, that one's right down the middle. I mean, there is 20 seconds, so like something crazy could happen. But still, we are starting to finally put it together in both phases of the game. And I mean, the D's just had a great kick return. Uh, I thought it was going to be a touchdown there for a minute. So that's not good. And yeah, what's up with this camera angle, dude? It's so dumb, man. I don't understand it at all. Let's see what Jackson does here. I mean, they got two timeouts, so they might actually very well get into field goal range. That's a wide open Jesse Moore, who is uh, catching everything thrown his way. Timeout by the D's. I'm sure they're not in Dustin Hopkins field goal range quite yet but they easily could get there with one time out in their pocket. I mean, that is not outside of the realm of possibilities. I can't believe they got that big, big kick return. That's crazy. And that's just going to be not really helping their cause. I mean, they're going to kick this. Dustin Hopkins does have a leg. I watch him in Cleveland all the time, but this is like a 62 yarder and <laughs> the camera angle didn't even change. All right, Madden, whatever. But how about that? We go into the locker room with a three-point lead. We're playing good. We get the ball back after halftime. Drew Thompson's out there throwing darts. Yes, he does have that one pick, but he has that great bomb to DeAndre Hopkins and then that laser dart to David Njoku. You get a look at some of the games around the SFL. Make sure to check out any of your teams playing, see what the final score is. Of course, I will recap that at the end of the episode as well. And let's see if we can come out of the locker room and put up some more points. Get a look at the rushing TD leaders. Christian McCaffrey, our very own at number one. But then Daniel Banks, not far behind him either. He is also doing his thing. I would love to get some sort of a ground game established here because right now we're doing good. We're playing good on you know both phases of the ball. And I would love to just dominate that time of possession. Let's see if we can get some good blocks. And I mean, not really, but Christian doing the work himself, picking up a nice, healthy gain of nine. I mean, I see no reason to really go away from him too much. Um, I did make run outside our focus coming out of halftime. So probably don't want to be running inside too much, but only needed one, only got one. And we did get the first down. I feel good about this screen pass. Yes, I called it myself. Sue me. I don't care. We're trying to get victories out here in Tuscaloosa. And McCaffrey going to get it with ease. Going to get popped there at the end too as well. But a nice pickup. We are got this ball smack dab on midfield. Would love to come down here, score, and, uh, you know, really, really make this game feel a lot more comfortable. I haven't felt comfortable about too many games so far in this season, so would love to do that here. We're going to go ahead and send Tyler Boyd in motion. He might just be the first read, actually, and yeah, I'm kind of, I don't know what that was. I'm kind of glad that that was the end result, though, because it actually could have been a lot worse. Man, I wonder if Najoku gets separation here. Uh, Antoine Winfield is the lone safety up there. We're going to give him a shot. Najoku's a big target. Oh, he caught it. Oh, he's in. Look at Thompson putting on a clinic. Oh, man, this is the best our offense has looked in quite some time. David Najoku is a big target. And I knew if Antoine Winfield, I mean, that was a, that was not an easy catch. Perfectly placed Paul. That's actually a pretty good animation as far as Madden is concerned. And I mean, Drew Thompson, welcome to the SFL, brother. Still a lot of football left to go. I realize it, but having a 10 point lead against a five and one Jersey Shore D's team. I, I am more than happy about that. Our defense is playing good, but can they sustain? That's the question. Our defense has been a bit of a wild card this season. We've seen some peaks and some valleys, you know, mostly valleys, but 
man, if we could just get a big sack, a big INT, something like that, I would say our season is about to turn around. Lamar Jackson is a tough, tough customer to deal with, so I'm sure he's going to be doing everything in his power to prevent that from happening. But so far up until this point, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Maybe Marcus May can get uh, some pressure off the edge here. Jackson kind of signaling his men back there, changing things around. I had an angle on Jackson, but doesn't matter because Roquan Smith was there. I'm sending heat, and I really hope James Cook stays back here to block, which he actually is. No, he's not. Come on, TJ Edwards gets to him. He does. Hawks him down. And man, this Tuscaloosa defense, these last couple of weeks, it was rough. <laughs> If you've been watching every episode of this series, you would know. It, it's been a struggle. But we allowed 20 points last week. We're only at 14 right now. Drew Thompson is just... At, oh, why, didn't I, why didn't I fair catch that? I don't know. It's looking like Drew Thompson is going to have to put this team on his back like he's freaking Greg Jennings or something out here. Shout out to you if you understand that reference. Wow. Greg Jennings putting the team on his back. With a broken leg, that's crazy. Najoku continues to be the man. He's having a huge afternoon. Drew Thompson now at, look at that. Got to get that screenshot there, man. Oh, of course. That's going to make the thumbnail. This could be the Drew Thompson thumbnail performance because he is putting on a clinic out there. But time of possession is our best friend right now because as long as we possess the ball, guess what? The Ds can't. And I don't want them to possess the ball because I know they can flip the switch at any given minute. I do kind of want to just send Romeo Dobbs here. Maybe uh, Christian McCaffrey gets open. That is the same interception I threw earlier on the same route to the same freaking Makai Blackman. Oh my God, dude. That's the last thing I could have done. I'm trying to throw this game. And it's Najoku who's a big body target, and I just, for some reason, I keep thinking that he's going to get open, and Makai Blackman, who's, I mean, it's like, not even the best, they got Chidabe Awuzie, they got Aiden Grau, they got Antoine Winfield on this team, and it's Makai Blackman doing the damage, and that is look, not what we wanted right there, man, got to recover from that. Still a lot of football left. Uh, ooh, James Cook there getting stopped up by Silas Vaden for a gain of nothing. Going pressure again. Pressure has worked to a degree. Going to use her up on TJ Edwards and really just seeing what James Cook does back there in the backfield. It's a screen. I knew it. And we can't get off the block. And Cook is going to make us pay for that mistake. All right. Got to lock the freak in here, man. Can't be throwing those interceptions. I can't. I absolutely can't. And I can't believe both interceptions came <laughs> on the same route to the same guy targeting the same player. We still got a lead only by three, though. Got to play smart football. Can we run the ball here? That's the question. I think that if we can, oh, that's a good one. No holding calls either. Thank God. Seems like they're always throwing a flag on somebody for a hold. Not on that one. And Christian now about at the half century mark which is that's kind of where he's lived all season I did not mean to call this play FYI I was trying to go back to McCaffrey on the inside zone which is definitely definitely what I want let's see if we can keep the good times rolling needed one more block and I'm actually just gonna let this thing tick down to the end of the third don't go anywhere folks we got a good one brewing here 24 21 shouldn't even be in this position but I can't stop throwing interceptions on mesh spots to David Njoku, apparently. But uh, we're in a good position now. We got the ball. Still got the lead. We're moving semi-methodically down the field. It's second and seven. I mean, coach is saying RPO again. Like, uh, why not? Let's do it again. Romeo Dobbs has been uh, kind of making him pay. I don't really like uh, if we do have to run it, though. Let's just see. No. Dobbs going to do it again. Hey, if we got to RPO our way to victory, then so be it. Time for a TE attack. Najoku has been a big target of ours today. And going to be the target of that one, too. And he's going to get in for a second touchdown. Oh, thank God we needed that. The pressure was in my face. I don't know why this, like, our offensive line isn't good. But it is good. 
Like, we got Trent Williams, who's our left tackle, and that's usually where I see the pressure coming. But another dot. Absolutely gorgeous pass from Drew Thompson. We still got almost eight minutes to go, so a lot of football. Oh, I might have missed that, too. Did I? No, I didn't. I'm so bad at kicks. But back to a more comfortable 10-point lead. Let's go defense. Just got to hang on for about eight more minutes, guys. I know you can do it. I have faith. Some pressure on Jackson would be nice, forcing him to make a mistake or take a sack or something like that. No, it's just going to be Malik Neighbors catching it in the middle of the field for a gain of six. Stay in zone for a while, and Austin Kringle, I need him to just kind of patrol center field. It's a screen pass. These screens are killing me. This is like what I do to teams. They're giving me a little taste of my own medicine here with the with the screens and the RPOs and, oh, Madden's saying, let's go back to prevent now. So stupid. No, I'm not going to play freaking prevent defense. Like, that's that's not, I say this, I feel like every episode, but it's not the time to do it. There's a time and a place for everything. And this is not the time to play prevent. So come on. Silas Vaden, I'm usering up on your brother. It is Jesse Moore who's got, what's he got, about eight catches? I feel like he's... Had a very busy afternoon. They can score here. The clock is not their friend right now. And even if they score, that'll be bad. Okay, I don't want that. But we'll have a chance to possess the ball and end the game. Maybe even score again ourselves. I don't know. Depends on how long this drive takes. And I got Roquan Smith coming out there. Jaden Taylor was in good position, but Tutu Atwell had just a step on him. Come out dime here, but I am going to send a lot of pressure. Is that the right move? I don't know. Do I care? No. Taysom Hill in motion here. Going to use her up still on the D-line. I feel like that's the best thing to do. Silas coming in with some pressure. Taysom Hill going to get it, but Jaden Taylor is there to drill him. And like I said, man, the clock is not the D's friend right now. I guess we'll go in dime because the coach is so adamant about that. Don't really know why, but they are. And, uh, oh, Silas kind of coming in unblocked. There's those screens, though. Getting about sick of seeing those. And let's hold the Ds to a field goal, please. I'm going to send heat at Lamar Jackson. Would love to see James Cook stay back in there as a blocker because I am usered up on Roquan Smith. He's not going to be a blocker. Marcus May going to get Jesse Moore. Jesse Moore is balling out in this game, by the way. Man, you just get the feeling, though, that the defense is going to need to just seal this thing away man uh, it's cooper cup on the end around i don't know about that play call necessarily brandon moore gonna wrestle him down and they're actually going to hurry up i don't like that one bit don't do that why are you why are you doing that why are you doing that it is caught by Moore, but gonna be short by two and they're going for it again they're going for it again i'm calling a timeout i don't like that we gotta get reset that's a ballsy ballsy call they're going to hurry up and they're probably Looking to uh, to catch, yeah, see, look. Yeah. Good thing I did that, because now John Harbaugh is going to rethink it, and a field goal is beautiful in this situation because even if the worst was to happen and we punt the ball back to him or I do something dumb and they get the ball back, a touchdown would only tie it. So let's just kill this clock and get out of here with a very impressive win. I mean, one more first down effectively ends this game we're gonna try the outside with McCaffrey I did make that my focus after all but there's just really no blockers there and yeah the D's are gonna use a timeout now the question is yeah the coach I was gonna say the coach does want me to pass it which that is the right call I'm not gonna go screen or anything like that um I mean Najoku on this route he's he's been getting it Probably going to be him or Friar Muth. And look at the Chief David Njoku. I mean, he has had a great game. So has Drew Thompson. So has Drew Thompson. They have been a formidable duo in this one. And I mean, let's just seal this thing up, guys. Ball carrier conservative. Put the clock. Uh, uh, can I still do that? Yeah, we need to put double tap. Okay, well, I was trying to go whatever. I was trying to go hurry up clock mode. I don't even see that option there anymore. doesn't matter. But as long as we don't fumble it or something like that, 
This one is pretty much over. McCaffrey, can you seal up this ball game for us, please? He is, finally. Got that outside zone, outside run cooking. I mean, those are typical stats for McCaffrey, minus the touchdowns. Usually he has a lot more of those, but uh, those have been poached in this game by one Drew Thompson. But how about that? Two in a row, and we're going to improve to three and four. And we did that against a very, very solid Jersey Shore D's ball club. Is this the turnaround that we needed of our season? I sure hope so. But if nothing else, I love to see the fight from the Terminators. And how about that? You love to see it. Todd Bowles and John Harbaugh. Little chess match in this one. And I tried my best to give it away <laughs> with those two picks. But Drew Thompson just had an absolute game. Got to check on these stats here and see exactly what he was able to do. I mean, look at that. It's, it's pure beauty. 21 for 31 for 308 yards. Four touchdowns, great. Two picks, not so great. But, hey, he was a gunslinger in that one, and that's what gunslingers do. Lamar Jackson never really got it going too much. I mean, he played a clean game, but, yeah, he wasn't really taking too many risks. CMC did what he typically does in terms of yards, I guess. Uh, James Cook, small sample size, did okay. And uh, Jesse Moore, though, the tight end, 9 for 56. No touchdowns, but he was a workhorse and he was uh, Lamar Jackson's favorite target Romeo Dobbs and Dave, David Njoku went off man six catches for 147 and three touchdowns I mean come on now that is awesome and getting a look at our defense here Amari Taylor led the way he was all over the field with seven tackles nothing else besides that but uh, he was all over the field Brandon Moore had four tackles that big TFL and they actually counted that as a sack too so Brandon Moore is kind of like exploding on the scene Making some big plays for us. Jaden Taylor had three tackles. Jax Vaden had two tackles. No sacks in this game, unfortunately. Aiden Leslie had two tackles. Uh, Silas Vaden had two tackles. And Austin Kringle had one tackle. So, great game by the Terminators all around. I like what we're doing. Now, let's go check out the rest of the subscriber stats around the league here in week six. Okay, see Eels do rebound against the Portland Destroyers after we handed them that L last week. And look at Mason Buchanan continuing to impress. He had 299 and also three touchdowns as well. No interceptions either. And uh, Grom Briner actually had a pretty good game himself. 17 for 72. Very CMC-like, right? And Buchanan also did a little bit on the ground as well. Six for 28. And then as far as the receiving game, for the Destroyers, nice to see Alexander Kleblek burst onto the scene. Seven receptions for 57 yards. Did not help propel his team to a victory, though, but still a pretty good stat line for Mr. Kleblek. These Savannah Spirits, man, they just, they're 7 0. They just down the Salem Steelhawks. And I mean, this guy right here is just playing like a man possessed. Caleb Hayes, 237, three touchdowns. And then we had Cameron Moore here, 190, and uh, one touchdown to one pick. The rushing stats here, Daniel Banks adds another touchdown to his resume. 22 attempts for 65 yards. Caleb Hayes also had 5 for 20 and Cameron Moore 4 for 15. And getting a look at the uh, receiving game here, George Smith, 8 for 66 and a touchdown. His brother, DeAndre Smith, 4 for 62. We had Daniel Banks also had 3 for 32. Dallas Bolton, 2 for 21. So subscribers all over the freaking place. And same with the same with the defense too. We had Daniel THG had five tackles and that's it. Not Oreo adds another sack and another TFL to his resume. So he's starting to get up there a bit. Also had four tackles as well. So a pretty good stat line for him. Cam O'Shea, the new subscriber had four tackles, but three deflected passes from that middle linebacker spot. You love to see that as a defensive coordinator. Jackson Prime had four tackles. And <clears throat> last but not least, Trustin Smith had two tackles and a big interception. So shout out to the Spirits. We play y'all next week. And I'm freaking scared. Akron Summits dropped to the Edmonton Coyotes. And we'll see what our subscriber quarterback, Dragon Zetron, was able to do against Deshaun Watson. Man, he's playing bad in real life. But Dragon here went 260 yards, pretty good, but no touchdowns and a pick. You'll want to see those re reversed, if nothing else, you know, if not even more in the favor of the touchdowns. But 
Not enough for Dragon and the Summits as they do drop to the Coyotes. Topeka Silverbacks starting to slip a little bit. They only put up eight against the Dakota Pronghorns. And Kyrie Brooks, 171, one touchdown. But he was outdueled by J.J. McCarthy. Silverbacks Nation, I know you're going to bounce back. These last couple weeks have been rough. And uh, unfortunately, they do drop to the Pronghorns. Speaking of dropping, the Boulder Rockies drop as well. And I'm not going to forget to showcase my man Austin Lucas in the receiving games. Patrick Mahomes on the Kissimmee Crocs, by the way. But Lucas Thomas, 172, but no touchdowns and no interceptions. Rushing, he was 9 for 43 and had a touchdown, though. So that's pretty good. And Austin Lucas also had a very good game as well. 5 for 85. But somehow the Rockies were only able to put up seven points and they do drop to the Kissimmee Crocs. Grand Rapids Lightning put up a 30 bomb against the struggling Toronto Thunderbirds. T-Birds Nation, I'm pulling for you. I got the colors on too as we speak. And wow, look at Lucas Spicer though. 347 yards, two touchdowns and no interceptions. That's that's a game. That's a game right there. Jordan Baker went one for 173 and one touchdown, no picks either, so that's good. Uh, Baker also had a touchdown on the ground, though, six for 16, and Lucas Spicer was three for 16, so both quarterbacks kind of getting involved on the ground game, and wow, Floyd Butler exploding, having his game of the season, five for 76 and two touchdowns. GG's, my man. What a shootout between the Albany Argonauts and the Rochester Rebels. Albany pulls it off by four and we had a subscriber QB duel here. Chase Kaiser went 372, three touchdowns, but those two picks were killer. And new subscriber Craig Ray gets a W in his first game. 259 through the air, three touchdowns and an interception. And we get a look at the rushing attack of Bobby Donuts continuing to add those touchdowns. Not the most pretty in terms of yardage, but the touchdowns is what matters. And he had two of those puppies. Chase Kaiser went 5 for 20, and Craig Ray went uh, 5 for 19. And then as far as the receiving game, wow, Tommy Pickle, he had a good game. I love saying that name, man. So awesome. 3 for 94 and a touchdown, and this one looks like it was a paddle of the freaking ages. North Carolina Flyers not having a, the best time right now. They're kind of struggling. Ashton Saber of the Sentinels does pick up the W for his squad. He had 195, two touchdowns. And then the brother of RQB, who just went off today, Alex Thompson, not so much. 169, one touchdown. He had less interceptions than his brother, sure. But uh, yeah, this one was not not really, a, I guess, kind of a high-scoring game. The yards were not there for the QBs, but Ashton Saber does pull out the victory for his Sentinels. Another 40 bomb for the San Jose Industrials. Drake May had a good game and just show me a good game from Yeezy Fuentes. I'm not seeing it. One for six? No. I mean, he's been on a tear lately, so having a quiet game, you know, it happens to the best of us. Most important thing, though, his his industrials did over double up the Montana Mountain Lions, winning 41 to 20. And that is your subscriber stats here for uh, week six. If you didn't see your player, that means they were on a buy. Or week seven, I'm sorry, not week six. If you didn't see your player, that means that they were on a bye. And I'm about to say bye <laughs> this next game because Savannah Spirits are 7-0. They crushed us last time. If we could somehow win this game, we get back to 500, and we're starting to creep back in there. I mean, we're not a playoff team yet, but we are second place in our division. Our division is not very good aside from the Spirits. Make sure you tune into that game because it is going to be a wild ride, I'm sure. But that's going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.